right, so let's uh, let's go to the 14th congressional mm -hmm. district. Is there any surprise that Hanson Clark has jumped this far out in this latest poll? And we're getting close. No, I mean he has sort of default incumbent status there. People, he he was the congressman in that area. People recognize the name. Uh, you know, he did quite well in his run uh, against uh, uh, Carolyn Kilpatrick. You know, I, I think it's not a surprise, uh, but I still think that race is wide open. Uh, I'm not sure Hanson Clark's walking away with it. I think either Hobbs or Lawrence could could uh, come out on top of that race. All right, do you agree that Nolan says this is wide open still? I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's wide open. I mean, that's a that's a nice big lead uh, three weeks from the primary, 10, 10 11 points uh, over over you know the primary. Uh, or the most familiar candidate in Oakland County. And that's what, what is surprising to me. I mean, yeah, Hanson used to represent that district, but it was a Detroit district uh, when, he, when he represented it. And as soon as it was redrawn to include Oakland County, he got p beaten pretty badly. Uh, I mean, Gary Peters uh, uh, really, really stuck it to him uh, two years ago, mostly by, by carrying that Oakland County vote. This poll would suggest that Perhaps Hanson has more truck in Oakland County than, than we thought he did because there are two Oakland County candidates uh, in that race this time, Brenda Lawrence and Rudy Hobbs. Uh, so I, I, that, that caught me a little surprise. That may be what's surprise. at work here, Steve. I mean, they may be splitting up that Oakland County vote. That's possible. And he's right? still keeping his strength in Detroit, in Detroit and Wayne County. But he's got no money. I mean, Hanson Clark no, has no money. There'll be a lot of money spent in these last, what, two, three weeks? And when you say a lot of money, what... I mean, how much are you talking about? Well, it's not like, certainly Hands not like it. Yeah, I mean, it's not in, not anything like you're seeing, say, in the 11th district. But, uh, you know, there's uh, Hobbs and, and Lawrence yeah. were both fairly well funded. Uh, Brenda's got a lot of national money from. And, and Hobbs is picking says. up a lot of endorsements as yeah. well. Yeah. So he's getting some union money. Now, the other thing that's interesting in this race is the movement. The last poll showed Rudy Hobbs at 6%. Um, now he's at 20. That's a huge jump. That is a very big jump. And I know uh, that you can only take polls, uh, you sure, know, I mean, you've got to, sure. you've got to gauge it. But, but you that know. does, that, I think that does say something about momentum, uh, that, that the movement in the race is perhaps toward him. Now, is that coming from Brenda's side of the ledger or, or from Hanson Clark's side of the ledger? I, who knows? Um, but that's, that's a big jump. And if he can, if he can maintain that kind of, shift, maybe he, he gets uh, ahead. Let me ask you this. You guys both did a candidate forum uh, a, a short time ago. Oh, in, a debate. Yeah, right, in, right. in the 14th. So what were the main issues that were, were being brought up, and what was your perception of, of how the candidates were answering? Well, I mean, this isn't like some kind of A-team here that's running for this office. Well, now, why do you say that? <laughs> okay, you've got a... No one says there's no A-team anywhere. That was his there's column. Pretty, there's, that's pretty well right. No, I know. It's hard okay, now me. explain okay. why you say all that, because I think okay. you have backers of all so, four of these candidates that would ha take, you know... We're sending one of these people to Congress, and I think while I was sitting there, and I don't know, I won't speak well, for it was, Steve. And it was Brian uh, Dickerson, my deputy. Okay, right. So, 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 I mean, while I was sitting there, I'm thinking, we're going to send one of these people to Congress. None of them, uh, you've got a, a, a congressman uh, who sort of washed out once already. You've got a, a, a mayor, sort of a nondescript mayor, a very young lawmaker. And then there's a fourth person in the race who's a little bit, uh, you know. Yeah, Bird just said anything. I, I, I'm not sure I would say it's not the AT. I mean, if you try to think of who else would you throw into that race to make it better, who lives in that District. I don't know who lives in the district. I just know none of those four scream congressmen yeah. to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's four mediocre candidates, and the three top the three top um, uh, performers. There's not a whole lot of difference between them. So let me and ask. There's you nothing this. that distinguishes these. Three so let me ask you this, Nolan. If, sure if, if they don't scream congressmen to you, and you have one who served in Congress, you have someone who has been uh, a mayor of a major city, and you have someone who has been a state lawmaker. Then what does scream getting ready to be I think a, it speaks, a congressman? It speaks or woman? to the political pool in Michigan. I think term limits have destroyed us. 
Um, you know, almost anybody can be a legislator today. Almost anybody can become a legislative leader. We're not getting sort of the gravitas in our leaders I, I, that I, I we want. But isn't that the point? I will say isn't that this, the point though. that almost but, anybody yeah, can? No, no, no. Isn't isn't that the point of representation? No, it's not. It shouldn't no, it's be. Absolutely. Uh, not. But but uh, I, I will say this about Rudy Hobbs, who I, I think is is it's going to be good someday. Is is uh, you know has there's some separation between him and the others in this race. Uh, the work that he did in Sandy Levin's office, I mean, he's got a lot of experience uh, uh, in the con sort of congressional sphere. Now, he was here in, in Michigan. He was not part of the Washington staff. Uh, he's also, I think, a former school board member. Um, I mean, this is somebody who's got the kind of experience that is building toward a congressional run. It's, it's early for him in my uh, um, estimation in terms of his elected career. I mean, he's only been in the House uh, in Lansing for, I think this is his first term. Uh, I, I would like to see him have more time uh, to do so that. But you want to see growth. But but there's nothing too, wrong with with, too, with too early for what him. he's done. Uh, we're you know. replacing those state. We're we're replacing a congressional delegation that had a pretty weighty congressional de delegation. A lot of leaders in that, yeah. and many, or if not all, of those came out of a, a pre-term limits legislature. That's true. Not all, but many of them did, where they had a chance to spend. 10, 12, even right. 20 learning years before you learning go. instead of you know two year. We're, I mean, we're about in to replace and uh, once again both the House and the Senate leaders in the state legislature mm -hmm. with people probably we've never heard of. Yeah, um, and we do this every four to six years. It's all right. Well, let's crazy. let's move on a little bit because we're going to take a quick now look at the 11th congressional district. Go ahead and take a look at the numbers there. Looks like Carrie Benavolio could be a one and done. The Epic MRA poll puts challenger Dave Trot ahead. 53 to 31 percent, and that's with some significant Tea Party support for Dave Trot. And then there was just a candidate for him last night, and Carrie Benavolio wasn't even there. Um, uh, are you surprised at the, I guess, at the, the, the distance here between these two? Well, no, not at all. I Money. mean, Ben, ben Fioli seems to have fold, folded his campaign. He wasn't at the candidate forum. You don't hear any anything from him. He's raised almost no money, money, still paying off debts from his last campaign. This guy was the accidental candidate. He he won because there was nobody else on the ballot um, two years ago. Now there's somebody else on the ballot. Trot's spending a lot of money. I think he's probably spending a lot more money than he needs to, he to, to, yeah. um, to win this. Um, no, I mean, you've got a campaign, and Ben Violio has not campaigned. Why hasn't he campaigned, Stephen? Well, I, I think you don't have any money. I mean, I think that that that's what it comes down to. You got to be on the air. You got to get your message out, and you need money to do it. All of the money in this race. I mean, first of all, Dave Trot has a lot of his own money uh, to be able to spend, but he wouldn't even have needed that here uh, because the the sort of establishment, um, the the GOP establishment, is so much more behind him than they are behind but he, Ben Tavolio. And ben Fioli went to Congress without an organization. Yes, he did. And without really any Which is, political you know, or campaign uh, experience, uh, he sort of fell in. And, and I, and I would say, up. you know, we, we, we have made uh, quite a bit of fun of, of Ben Tavolio at, at times. Uh, he, he's turned out to be a, a more solid congressperson than people thought he would. Uh, he, he's not been nutty. He's not, you know, the reindeer rancher. Uh, kind of uh, oddball uh, in in the job. He's towed the he, party line. He, 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 he has done a lot of he's done a lot of the things that he's supposed to do. He's shot his mouth off a couple times in a way that that he probably shouldn't have. But you know he's in Congress. <laughs> That's what people in Congress do. Uh, I, I think he deserves credit for having you know stepped up to to do this when Dad McCotter imploded uh, a, a few years ago. But but he's not part of that GOP establishment, and they don't want him there. Uh, and Dave Trot is so. So, so Nolan, is it anything specific in Dave Trot's message, or is it just the fact that you're seeing Dave Trot, Dave Trot, Dave Trot? He's Trott working really that? hard. Uh, he's working really hard. Um, he's an attractive candidate, one on one when he meets with people, when he speaks to people. Uh, you know, I think he's an, uh, he's he's, he's a, a more very traditional, good candidate. He is a much more traditional congressional candidate. Wow. I mean, he's somebody you would see running for that job. Kerry Bentivoglio. Was not. I think Dave Trot is is this this race is about him not being Bentavolio. It's not about him being Dave Trot. Uh, I disagree with that somewhat because he's, he's worked really hard lose. to sell himself. Well, he's somebody who could lose that seat in two years too. Uh, who? If you get well, if you get another uh, uh, more experienced candidate. I mean, somebody who doesn't have the taint of of his uh, two years. Of legal he's going to be a, a congressman. He's not going to be. 
you know, associated with the mortgage. Uh, wow. I, I was just going to say, that, that, that seems have, to not have been a factor have, here. He's going to have a, a huge war chest. I think once you win that seat, if you're going to hang on to maybe, it. Maybe, maybe. All right, well, let's move on and let's take a look now at the race for Wayne County Executive. It's pretty crowded, pretty competitive. The Free Press endorsed former Wayne County Sheriff Warren Evans. The Detroit News endorsed Westland Mayor Bill Wild. So I'm just going to lob that softball up here for both. Why did the Why did the Detroit News go with Bill Wild? Well, Wild's Warren? most, I think, the Wild's the most qualified uh, person in the race with the best experience for the job. But there's also an, uh, the reason that if you're going to, I mean, Wayne County needs a culture change. Uh, this corruption, this rottenness in Wayne County didn't start with Bob Fricano. This has been going on for decades here. It needs a culture change in the same way Detroit needed a culture change. You're not going to change the culture of Wayne County by reaching back and getting getting people who have been in and around Wayne County forever. And most of the other candidates are associated very deeply with Wayne County and, and its past. I think Bill Wilde's a fresh face. Uh, he, he's not part of that Wayne County political establishment. I think he has the best chance of moving us beyond the dysfunction and corruption in the county. Is that fair to really do guilt by association if Warren Evans didn't have anything to Warren do Evans with what had nothing to do with anything in Warren, uh, Warren Evans Wayne. was part of the McNamara machine and you know. So I, was Mike it, Duggan. It, and everyone's exactly. talking about the, and exactly. look at the change that we've so, got in Detroit. It, exactly. But so how comfortable are you having Duggan sort of uh, with his guy running Wayne County. I well, think that's uh, that's a reason to be concerned. We endorse All right, so I'm going to say you endorse Warren We endorse Evans. Warren. He's got a lot more experience than Bill Wilde actually managing uh, large-scale organizations. I think Bill Wilde is a very exciting guy, uh, is doing really good work in Westland, which is a very small pond, uh, but it's important. It's an important experience. He's not ready to run the county. Uh, Why not? Uh, number one, it's the, the relationships that exist between the other electeds uh, in Wayne County, the prosecutor, uh, uh, the sheriff. That is one of the biggest problems that you've got uh, negotiating budget things and keeping those, those departments uh, in line. I don't think Bill Wilde is quite ready to deal with that. Warren Evans has been in that mix before as the sheriff was more responsible uh, as the leader of that department than, than we've seen since then and I think we'll be able to get uh, Kim Worthy uh, and Benny Napoleon to work together to, to stay within uh, to stay within budget and he'll also get him more money because he will cut uh, the executive staff down significantly from 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 what it is. Uh, maybe and he that's will, not, maybe he won't. That's not, I mean, a bad, guy, that's not a knock on Bill Wilde. I, I like Bill Wilde, and, and it, this was a close call for us. Uh, Warren Evans just has more experience. But Evans was police chief, too. He was, and he was very right. good. What happened there? The crime went down. That's what the, the crime went down, but he, he got, got in trouble. Fired he got for in bad judgment on a couple did, of fronts. He did yeah. making a he can be a, he's making a, a video a, for for a reality show, but and could, could sleeping you with his staff? For, I mean, it, it's. Yeah. And no, there's I judgment see. issues that have plagued Wayne County for years. I don't, I don't, I don't I think it's time to move that. past that. Yeah. So who's splitting the vote here? Uh, you, what do you mean? I mean, uh, I, I think I think this was a tough race for Bill Wilde to win, um, uh, principally because he is from a very small, uh, you know, sort of out county uh, city, and and doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of name recognition. But you know. Uh, Warren will pull, I think, you know, obviously very well in the city, and he's going to get a lot of suburban support Well, you, too. but you also have four suburban candidates. You do. There, including the incumbent, and Bob Fricano, right. and they're all from Western Wayne County. Yeah. So, you know, you've got um, Phil Cavanaugh, Kevin McNamara, Bob Fricano, Bill Wild, all sort of splitting up that Western Wayne County and Down River vote, and Warren Evans the only Detroit candidate. It gives him a huge edge. Gosh, would you say that that's going to be the toughest job for someone when they walk in in November? Why do you, or j January, why do you want you this want job? This job, yeah. I mean, there's a lot to do and there's a lot to clean up. Uh, I, you know, Evans talks about paring down the size of that, that Wayne County executive's staff and office and in, in endeavor, you know, to, to, to make more funds available for the prosecutor and the sheriff, which are the, the those are the business ends of government in in Wayne County and they are very short on funding. Uh, I, I think he has more of a shot at straightening that out than anybody else does.